Hi, my name is Liz, and this is an introduction to the third program produced by Professor Stan Gaby related to the mysterious natural histories of Connecticut and Rhode Island. The first is entitled Off the Beaten Path, a travelogue of mountains, caves, and seashores. The second is called The Apocalypse, a lecture presented at the La Grura Center in Stonington on August in 2012. This program, these programs are viewable at SEC TV in Groton. This third program is a venture up the Great White Mountain. Come along and enjoy. This is where we're headed. Uh, Lantern Hill. Pretty big prominent pure quartz formation. We're looking southeast right now. The hill runs north and south for about a mile. It's pure quartz. This is a special stop. What we're looking at is a geologic en enigma because of its extreme length of uh, a mile long of pure quartz that had exuded up into the surface of the earth probably 100 million years ago. And we can see that if we get, could get beyond uh, the uh, obstruction of what is now the uh, new office building that replaced the old mining operation, we would be able to see further south and if we were on top of Lantern Hill, like right about there where the where the uh, cliff faces are, that local speedlunkers come and try their skill, you'd be able to see down to Long Island Sound and into Fisher's Island. But even with the snow cover and this pond that is right below us called, Lan called Lantern Hill Pond, totally frozen, totally snow covered, you can see that there is still pure white quartz that is the exposed bedrock. Now this this hill was scoured from the north by the glaciers. The glaciers went north and south and the hill resisted erosion and all of what's to the sides, the flank of it, are were all soft material that was scraped south that went to push up Long Island approximately 17 and 18 thousand years ago. I don't like the side button. Um, Do you like it? Honestly? I like it. What'd you have before that? No, I'll, I'll stand here, but if you want me to back up to get into the picture, you want me to back up that way? I can get it. <laughs> yeah, back up a few more. All right. Well, hi. What I wanted to tell you about that direction that you're looking in right now, you know, you said you are near the uh, conservancy area called Avalonia. Well, all of this area here is Avalonia. It was originally part of Europe. So everything to the south and to the east of us is of European origin. Everything on the other side was part of North America, on the other side of this hill. So this thing was added here probably around 350 million years ago. And how can we tell? We look at the rock type and then go over and look at the rock type over in Europe. And one of the proofs, one of the amazing proofs is that if, if we pick up the rocks where the cliff walk is over in Newport, they're exactly the same as the rocks along the coast of Wales. Another proof is fossils. There's something called a trilobite, the largest trilobite in the whole world was called the Paradoxides. Over in Jamestown, in Avalonia, we find fossils of the Paradoxides on the rocks. The only other place we find them in the world is over in Europe. So those are proofs that we were one time connected together and since, since that time had, had gone apart. And uh, these little trees here, by the way, I think they're called pitch pine. Am I right? Do you guys know your trees? No. We do. Yeah. I think they're called pitch pine. They're supposed to have five needles and they're stunted. But when you light them up, they, uh, they burn like a candle. Sometimes there are some places called candlewood because it's filled with pitch pine. I, I mean, why they're stunted is because look at this. There's, there's no soil up here, but you know, the, the crumbling of even this white rock makes its own soil. So did you guys ever hear that in your classes that we were connected to it? Okay, so I'll go where you are, or you get behind me. And I did this sketch from here of Lantern Hill. Can you get that? And then look at that. 
Yeah. Okay, no, you don't have to pan all the way around, but just get this sketch from our point. That's how much pure quartz was there back in 1979. And now you can see that all of this exposed quartz is gone. So that's how much there had been active quarrying. And if we weren't, uh, if we didn't stop them from quarrying or if the land wasn't sold, all of that hill would be gone. And this is a natural resource for the state of Connecticut. People can't believe that we have this fantastic mile long uh, quartz dike that is sitting 500 feet in the air and everything else around us is so much lower. The reason why is because of differential erosion. The ice age just came down, scraped everything lower. There were actually miles of rock above us when all of this landscape formed, but it's not there now. At any rate, the pretty spot up here. Straight down that way, I don't know, uh, Kim, are you, do you recognize any uh, uh, signposts out there on the ocean? I, I know that's downtown Mystic here. Yeah, that's downtown Mystic. And uh, what's neat about downtown Mystic is that is that this fault that we're on that allowed this quartz to uh, extrude to the surface, there's a fault continuing that makes up the Mystic River. So the Mystic River is on the same fault. There are a lot of north and south faults in Connecticut, as well as other directions. But trying to see what's out on the horizon right now, straight south of us, I'd, I'd have to look at the map. The first time I ever heard about this place was one of my students in 1972 brought me up here from Mohegan Community College where I used to teach. I taught there for 30 years and retired. And he brought me up here and I found it so exciting that I brought students up here forever after that time because it was just so exciting and close place to visit in, in terms of a field trip for geology. That student in 72, gosh, I forget his name. He was red haired with glasses, nice quiet gentleman. A couple of years later, he took my astronomy class at uh, University of uh, Connecticut at Avery Point and got it somehow this ever gets out on anything and if, if he can contact me he would know who I am because uh, uh, I I, uh, I give him the credit for finding Lantern Hill and therefore introducing literally thousands of people up here because the hike is so quick it's just not so quick when you're older <laughs> but it's quick to get up and down that's not Fisher's Island out there is it it could you know it could be actually yeah that could looks be. pretty it looks too small to be Plum Island. You're Fisher's right. Island. You're right. It's a, it could be Fisher's Island because it's straight off Mystic. You're right. I believe you're right. I made a mistake. Uh, where we used to collect some of the big crystals were uh, right down there in the quarry. We cannot see it right here, but there is a really steep cliff face, cliff face right about where those trees are that goes down. If we were to continue along the trail that went along the side, that cliff face is at least uh, a, 200 feet high very dangerous but if you went back into the quarry there are still cliff faces with cracks in them where active rock hounds still go to try to find crystals and i used to go there too a long time ago but the quarry company used to dump their excess sand their silica back in there into a pond and one time i went with my brother a twin brother and i start walking i wanted to get to that crack on the other side of the this sand it looked like a sand flat a perfectly sunny day and i stepped in with my boots and i went in up to my knee and i lost my boot in there i couldn't believe it <laughs> something else i saw which i didn't take a picture of and god help me for not taking a picture of that but in that what quicksand was there were two large hogs that were floating just barely they were you know they were they weren't exhumed but just the top of them and the hairs of the ears you can tell and i didn't take a picture of that i don't know how they got there if a farmer dumped them off there thinking that was a place oh i didn't take a picture of that it was too bad and um uh, i do want to tell you a quick little story about this uh in 1991 since it's been in the paper and everything i can mention some names there was an old gentleman by the name of robert patrick from waterford connecticut and it was 1991. He used to come up here with his dog all the time. At least once a week, he'd climb up here. Uh, he was about 70 years old or something. And so this one day, he decided not to bring his dog. And he disappeared. Literally disappeared. They put on a most massive search of helicopters, beagles, bloodhounds. There were three department, uh, police departments involved in this trying to scour for them, look for them all over the place, even dredging some of these ponds, they couldn't find them. And 
uh, shortly after that, they went to the local uh, psychic, which was Pat Gagliardo from Norwich. And they asked her, well, I happened to see her about a year afterwards, and I asked her about that, and she said yes. She, she said she could see him near sand and railroad tracks. And so immediately I know what happened to him. I hate to be the guy to say this out loud, but yeah, he went down into that quicksand, and no one ever found him. No one found him. I tried to get information about him seven years after, ten years after, through the local constabulary, the police. They still would not release the files. They wouldn't release the files for over ten years, so the poor widow couldn't collect any money. He was just missing in action, and that's the day he didn't bring up his dog. But on that night, he was supposed to have gone missing. There was a father and son camping down, camping down on the side of the hill over there. They heard, echoing from the woods, help, help. They told that to the police. Who knows what that meant? That was at the time. Remember when we were when we were being bought out by the Indians and everything. So maybe they, they wanted to keep everything down. I personally feel that he went down into that quicksand, and the people with grappling hooks probably tore him to pieces, or you know, there were jurisdictional disputes over, you know, who's going to do what. But that's my mystery story, <laughs> you know, for up here. Outside of that, uh, the other. Uh, I should at least mention from here that even though all this part over here is originally part of North America, uh, we are surrounded on the whole north side of Lantern Hill by that black rock that you saw coming up. Yeah. And we can't see it right here because we're surrounded by it in the lower levels. If you were to take Route 2 up past the casino and those road cuts there, you would notice that they're pure black road cuts. That's that black rock which was basically a lava that never made it to the surface. And uh, I can I did a, I did a diagram of what that looks like. It is a very extensive, uh, very extensive, extensive deposit of that black rock. Come on, Stan, get to it. And uh, uh, the uh, Lantern Hill Quarry Company. They put it into bags and sold it as children's sand for play boxes. So I went to the local True Value stores and I, I opened up some of those bags. And guess what it is? It's crushed quartz. And if you look at it close under magnifying glass, every single grain of sand is like a sharp knife. Shards of like little miniature arrowheads. And they sell it as play sand. I told my students about that. They got outrageous and they went to the local stores and tried to get them to pull it. Because sure, it's pure and white and everything. But if you look at them close, there's not one rounded sand from a beach. Pure shards of quartz from this blasting and crushing. Okay, here we are again. Here's this uh, Lantern Hill you can't see, but it's right, it's right this north-south thing. And just north of us, which is back that way, is this big body of black rock. It's called Preston Gabbro. A big body. It is the most studied black mass of volcanic rock. Jonathan Winthrop, who was one of our first governors back around 1630, 1640, when he came, he was a naturalist in Europe. When he came here, the first thing he he owned all this land, I guess, and he declared uh, he declared Connecticut from the uh, um, uh, Pawtucket River as far as west as far as the eye could see, and uh, he settled in Fisher's Island. First thing he bought up was this this mountain here, Lantern Hill, pure quartz. Second thing he bought up immediately for himself was another deposit of quartz up by Cobalt, Connecticut, which is called Great Hill. He knew that wherever you find massive deposits of quartz, you're going to find gold. So he suspected that there would be gold infiltrated throughout some of this stuff. I don't know if he ever found it, but uh, he was very close by buying up Great Hill in Cobalt, Connecticut, because that's the only place gold has been ever found and documented in the whole state of Connecticut, in Cobalt, Connecticut, in one of those deposits up there. There was a uh, University of Connecticut uh, geologist by the name of Anthony Philpotts that went up there with his students and actually found gold. No other place has pure gold in the bedrock. It's 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 in the state forest called Mission Mission Mashi State Forest. We can't mine in the state forest, so we can't go get it. But he says that the assay of it is greater than uh, the gold concentrations of even some of the gold mines out on the west coast. At least that's a little sideline that uh, I thought I'd share with you guys. And of course, Jonathan Winthrop. So. Can I turn that around now and just show who you guys were? Yeah. Did you shut it off? Yeah, it's still going. Okay. Now let me see if I can get you guys. Oh boy, I 
I will not miss you any place with that jacket. That's oh, beautiful. No. It shines right out. Thanks for bringing us up here, Stan. Appreciate oh, it. But the thing is, you got to keep coming up, and you got to bring other people up too. Oh, we will. But just go, don't go too close to that quicksand over there. You don't want to join hands with <laughs> Robert Patrick from Waterford. That's right. And I don't ever want to go visit his. Probably there's no widow there anymore either. But uh, thank you, God, and thank you, State of Connecticut, that we still have Lantern Hill and that it wasn't, you know, destroyed. Over here, so you, so you get it. This is okay. This is Eastern Connecticut, right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that Preston Gabber I was talking about is this red deposit. It is highly magnetic. That little white slant that you see in there is Lantern Hill. That white slant is along the same line as this uh, this black line that goes right down to the Mystic River. It is a fault line. The Thames River, north and south, is a fault line also. But why I mention this uh, magnetic deposit of the Preston Gabbro is because we fly over the terrain and we, we can determine how magnetized the rock is by what's underlying it. Well, that black rock has a lot of iron in it, and that's why it's so magnetic. Is that what this map says? Magnetism? Yeah, it says magnetism. This map says magnetism. Notice over here in Old Lyme, there is a very highly magnetized area too. And uh, that means that there is a similar structure underneath of an old black volcano that never quite made it to the surface. And if we unfold this map as just a last little bit of a titillating bit for everybody here, as I unfold the map, you'll notice that uh, we've got a couple other spots of, of, of these red dots that are highly magnetic. Some of them are up there in, uh, in north uh, eastern Rhode Island. Uh, one of the important ones I want to mention is over here in Cape Cod. There are some deep, dark, black magnetic bodies under there. What's so amazing about this one here in Cape Cod is this is where most of the whales beach. They beach because of magnetic uh, confusions. So if whales can be affected by that, so can people. So sometimes we feel that the folks around here in Old Lyme have a lot of witchery going on and it could not, maybe, maybe it's not their fault, it's just that they're, they're kind of super sensitized. So this isn't... What this, about up there? What's up there? That's all the way up in Quebec. Boy, that's... Oh, wow. oh wait, wait, it's not in Quebec, it's in Maine still. Oh yeah, a bunch oh, yeah. of stuff up there. You see, so this says, if you look at the map here, it says an aeromagnetic map of southern New England. I find just perusing over maps like this gets so exciting because you can determine where all the all the super sensitives are in, in the area or, or where the birds may fly into radio towers or, or whatever. But at least you see that this Preston Gabbro is totally surrounding our Lantern Hill. We've got a spectacular geology here. See this line here? This line here that goes, that, that separates the state? All of this is Avalonia. All of this to the south to the east is Avalonia. All of that up that way was North America. Oh. And since you have that on, one last sketch, and I know the, these things don't lend themselves to little sketches very well, but... Is that what you, you meant? Avalonia in North America? Yeah, Avalonia. Oh. A A A Avalonia. All of this Avalonia is uh, European. European. All yeah. of this is European. It's called Avalonia. Avalonia. Uh, I want to show you something here, if you can get that, that top sketch. Mm -hmm. North America by itself was a little skinnier. It was hit uh, most recently with a plate of Africa. See that shaded part of Africa right there? That's what stuck. That shaded part, bam, 250 million years ago, and come look down here. Then when the supercontinent separated, all that shaded part was left behind. So everything to the east of the Appalachian Mountains was given to us by Africa. Hmm. Everything to the east. As a matter of fact, we can match up in Morocco, in, uh, uh, sorry, in West Senegal, a uh, mountain range there that matches up perfectly with a mountain range in Georgia. It would have been hard to convince Governor Wallace of that, of plate tectonics. In other words, it's African origin. <laughs> he's, he's governing Africa. Huh? You don't remember Governor Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tell me about it. Okay, we're good. Some of the scattered rocks beneath Lantern Hill, like right here near the old quarry office, are a good example of what the Preston Gabbro looks like. If we looked at this black rock, you notice that it has a lot of uh, 
there are some lilac-y uh, crystals in it. So the Preston Gabbro itself, even though it should be all black, it had cooled over such a long period of time that crystals grew in there. If you were to slice this and polish it, it would look exactly like the black pearl granite on your countertop. In the wind unfurling through the valleys, we hear the untamed call of the wild. Since earliest contacts, its true nature seemed veiled in mystery. Was the craggy peak respected, revered, or an evil ever present in the night? The haunting towers of our nightmares, even the jags of its faces evoke fear. Today, new theories begin to unveil the secrets of its nature. Parallel fissures were forming when a bulging started some 200 million years ago because the extensive supercontinent was not allowing the Earth's inner heat to escape. Thus it broke apart with the creation of the Great White Rock, Lantern Hill. It was the most spectacular creation to signal the grand rupturing of this, the world's last supercontinent. Pressurized granitic continental rock ascended slowly towards the surface, only to become molten and shoot into the clefts and surface fissures overhead like shafts of lightning. In this way, the precious pure quartz from the Earth's interior was injected into the crust. Today, as in antiquity, there are those who believe that our planet is a living organism and that certain places are charged with an energy that makes them sacred. Are there such places? Places that when you go there you have an extraordinary experience? Are there places where heaven touches the earth? The natives revered the gods here so much that they did not intrude upon it with settlement, for they did not want to offend them. This was a spot where they could find communion with the deities they worship. Some fear that the excavations Disturb the spirits of this place. Those who treat this site with respect will be rewarded with good luck. Here's a whole set of rusted crystals. Here's some that are not rusted, which are very pretty. So there will be crystals in these rocks, as well as there, as well as these pockets. See these pockets had crystals in them, and some still do. You going all the way up to the top? Yeah. In this blizzard? Yeah. Um, you could, it's this white cap up on top there. Some glaciers and Excuse stuff. There is, yeah. I've been, I've been up there before. We'll be okay. You'll be all right. Yeah. You'll be all right. I see how energetic she is. She is so energetic. Yes, you know me, probably. Gabby! Gabby. I took a class with you. And what was your first name? Ka Kathleen Johnson. Kathleen Johnson? Yeah, I took a class with you. It was a wonderful class. I loved it. It was environmental something or other. At Avery Point? Yukon? No, Eastern. Eastern? Eastern. Oh, so I never brought you up here, actually. <coughs> no. Mm -mm. Oh. We did a trip to Niantic. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Hey. yeah. That was a great class. I enjoyed it. It was nice meeting you. Kathy, yeah. I'll remember that name. Yeah. You, you lived in Ledger, and I was living in yeah. Gales Ferry. Yeah, at the yeah, I was in Gales Ferry. Yeah. So yeah, fun. both of us. Yeah. Have a safe trip up, you guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Guess what? One of my students. Yeah. Yeah, right now, and we'll just go slow. Master, you can put your emergency lights on it. Preston Gabbro, road cut to the Foxwoods. Black Preston Gabbro. Pretty ubiquitous in this area. That you sent me didn't look like the stuff that you uh, downloaded to me. Yeah, it looked like it was. Uh, that thing was 21 minutes total, and there must have only been. 
This is in Westerly, Norwich and Westerly Railroad Car Number no. 3. A coach smoker was built in High Point, North Carolina by the Southern Car Company in 1906. You can tell that that's the Westerly Library behind there. This is the type of uh, iron horse which, with uh, iron wheels that used to haul that used to haul uh, carts of quartz out of Larrington Hill along the side of the hill. We saw earlier that about two-thirds down from the top there was kind of like a platform, or at least we could see it faintly. It's still a hiking trail though. Uh, no longer in existence. We are now here at Nature's Art. We hope you were somewhat enlightened on this journey. Our landscape still has its mysteries. The Mashantuckets may still build a small museum on this site dedicated to this 100-year-old quarrying industry. Goodbye and good travels. Bye. <laughs>